Now, last week, she was striding along the South Downs Way and for this week's winter walk, Sara has been on, should we call it a pilgrimage? Yes, let's call it a pilgrimage. And what's so great is I've seen another bit of the South East I've ever seen before. And of course, I'm out of my car, so I'm seeing some beautiful countryside. And I always thought a pilgrimage had to be religious. I don't know what you think about it, but it doesn't. And not only that, I did something in a church this week that I've never done before. Since the times of ancient Britain, people journeyed on foot across our land to specific destinations for days or weeks, often for religious purposes. We call these walks pilgrimages, and they continue to this day. But there is a lost pilgrim route which has recently been rediscovered. The old way stretches from Southampton to Canterbury, around the former coastline. Today, I'm walking a section from Icklesham to Rye with Dawn Champion, who's working to bring the old way to modern walkers. It was discovered on a 14th century road map um, called the Goth Map, where there's this intriguing red line that connects all of these um, destinations together. And the fact that it connects to Canterbury is a really good indication that it's a route that would have been used by medieval pilgrims. So a pilgrimage, basically a walk, but obviously stopping at a load of holy places, or is that not really quite what it is? Well, we say it's a walk to a special destination with a specific intention. And it's really about um, finding your own personal meaning and connecting with the landscape, um, the stories that you discover, finding resonance um, in the places that you come to. Our first stop is All Saints and St Nicholas Church in Icklesham, where Dawn shows me evidence of those who came before us at least five centuries ago. And we know that pilgrims would have been passing through here because they've left some graffiti behind. So you can just see some little cross marks on the, on the column there, and it was traditional for pilgrims to, to make these marks, either when they were setting off or when they returned, possibly when they were passing through. As we walk, Dawn tells me that people of all faiths, or none at all, are welcome and there are non-religious sites aplenty along the old way, like this area, which inspired Wind in the Willows. The route continues to Winchelsea, and Dawn has a surprising way to soak up the atmosphere and stained glass glory of St Thomas the Martyr. Lying on the floor, we can really take a moment to be in peace and stillness, and look at all the light streaming through these spectacular windows and all their remarkable colours. And if we're lucky, we might just have a moment that resonates with our intention. We end at St Thomas's in Rye with a climb up the church tower and a chance to reflect. So here we are, Sarah. Journey's end. My goodness me. That was quite a climb up that tower there anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> it is. And you can, um, you can see all the way that we've been right the way back to Bicklesham from up here. Well, you could have done a clearer day. <laughs> <laughs> if only the sun was shining. Yeah. That's amazing, really, to look back on your journey. Yeah, and, it, and it's a really lovely moment just to um, stop and take stop and just kind of consider whether you're now taking your journey further forward onwards to Canterbury um, or whether you're, you're ending your journey here. I feel all relaxed now and you've got your breath back. Uh, just about, it took a long time. Did, have you ever lay on the ground in the church before? That was really amazing to do that actually, to look up at the stained glass in a really different way. I really, really love that. The colours were beautiful. Uh, uh, what a great segue that just brings me to because not only that, the colours have been absolutely magnificent this evening. Nature putting on quite a show in the last couple of hours. Thank you so much indeed for bringing us some gorgeous weather watchers pictures this evening because the sunset has been spectacular on what was a day that almost felt a bit like spring didn't it we did have quite a bit of cloud around but we've had some sunshine as well through the day today and in fact as we go through the next few hours uh, that cloud is going to be with us so it's going to be a pretty mild night you might have the odd break in the cloud here and there actually uh, but temperatures
temperatures, certainly high single figures, if not low double figures to start us off tomorrow. And then, like today, yes, quite a bit of cloud at first, but as we go through the afternoon, we'll see good spells coming through of sunshine and temperatures in the best of that, around 12 Celsius, 12, maybe 13 Celsius, 54 in Fahrenheit. The story, though, like I said earlier on in the programme, is we've had this very mild air and then something quite a bit colder, a short, sharp shock of something a bit colder. The world wintry is about to come out. So we start on Friday morning uh, with a little bit of rain. Could be a bit wintry on the back edge temporarily. Then we get some sunshine coming through behind it. And the temperatures then will fall away temporarily behind it on Friday. Could see seven degrees on Friday afternoon. So that'll be very, very different. After that, though, look at this. Yeah, it will feel like spring. 14 degrees next Monday. Does feel like spring, at the, yeah, spring does. at the moment, doesn't it, Sarah? Thank you very much indeed. That is it from us for now. But Chrissy will be here with you after the national news. Bye bye. In half an hour on BBC One, We Are England is with our key workers. There's a stranger out there who doesn't know it, but it is helping me. I just do appreciate it. And that's what's led me to be able to be in a position to say, OK, I'm going to make myself vulnerable and donate a kidney. You ask a lot of questions about Chloe, don't you? What happened? Can something think about it? What do you know about Chloe? She called me. Who are you? Who are you? I just thought I knew what, 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 what her life was. Chloe, Sunday at 9 on BBC One and iPlayer. Radio One Relax. Two streams to flip your vibe. Listen on BBC Sounds. You'll be designing a video game. Troll while using your legs. Ridiculous. Let me grab the penguin. That's point. No, I, I disagree with that point. People don't buy games for that purpose. You're fired. The Apprentice continues tomorrow at 9 on BBC One and iPlayer. Hello there, hope you find you very well indeed this Wednesday night on BBC One. Martin Freeman stars as the corrupt cop with a bag of troubles in the series finale of The Responder at nine. Right now, Alice Guess and Red Noses.